We're so glad everybody could join us here. So this is our Tableau user group um, for Houston nonprofits, though we are virtual. So we welcome everyone from all cities, all, all spaces, but especially those that are using Tableau in the nonprofit sector. So my name is Jessica Davison. So glad that y'all are here and can join us today. Um, I use Tableau. I work for United Way of Greater Houston. And um, I support a lot of our capacity building around data evaluation and CQI, and that's what brought me to Kristen Deppie, who's also here today, who co-leads this tug with me, because she's also using Tableau in a nonprofit here in Houston. So I'll hand it over to Kristen, who's going to do our welcome and all that good stuff. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, like Jessica said, thanks for coming on Friday at um, lunchtime. Um, this is our second meetup, and our third one will be in November to round out 2021. Um, so thanks again. Today we have Lee um, here with us who's going to do a, a demonstration on how to um, make your dashboard better and greater um, and show the impact of your agency as a nonprofit. Um, so to start off with, though, I thought we could all go around the room and, and say your name and and who you work, um, where you work, and if, uh, where you're located, especially if you're not with us in Houston, um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So, uh, oh, and then I'm sorry, and share what your favorite um, chart type is. So I'm Kristen Deppy. I work at Baker Ripley um, Community Developer um, Organization in Houston. And my favorite chart right now is a divergent um, bar chart for survey questions. And I will pop clean over to uh, pick on Travis. My name is Travis Harry, and uh, just started at Baker Ripley a few weeks ago. And uh, let's see, I guess my favorite chart, um, maybe a chloroplast, <laughs> like maps. So that's probably it. Uh, I guess next, um, Lexi Green. Hi, I'm Lexi. I am a data analyst in Denver, Colorado. I actually am considering starting a nonprofit for, um, it's, <laughs> I haven't quite fleshed out all of the the greater details of um, how to pitch it just yet, <laughs> um, but I do not have a favorite chart. I, I know that is horrible. I really love um, charting things uh, linearly. So with time, um, if I had to pick one, but I've never really thought too much about it. I just feel very drawn to doing things um, that way and enjoy work those into my presentations when I do that. Uh, that would be it. I guess I'll pass things to Lee. Oh, sure. Hi. Lee Feinberg, and I'm actually in Westfield, New Jersey. But I was recently in Denver to visit my sister who lives a little bit south of there. And I run a one person consulting company called Decision Biz, and I've been involved with Tableau for a long time, which is how I got here. I used to run the New Jersey and New York user groups, and I've also done quite a bit of work with the Tableau Foundation. And I also have several clients in the uh, nonprofit space. So I'm real happy to be here. And I don't have a favorite chart type either, but I'm gonna hold off on giving you a little bit extra part to that answer when we start uh, the main event. I guess I'll pass it to Paula. Hi everyone, my name is Paula Valmontin. I work for Urban Harvest. We're a nonprofit based in Houston, Texas. Um, we have community guidance farmers markets and 
I guess my latest discovery it's uh, combined access charts and dual access and the Likert chart. Um, so yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun with Tableau right now. <laughs> I'll pass it to who else is here? Uh, Peter. I'm Michael Mallet. I am the Research and Evaluation Director at United Way of Greater Richmond and Petersburg in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Um, I've been using Tableau for several years and we have a pretty big um, dashboard on our website. Um, and my favorite chart is probably just the basic uh, bar chart. I like to keep it simple. <laughs> All right, and I am totally gonna murder somebody's name. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce either of those. <laughs> if somebody wants to just jump in, that would be great. Uh, I'm, I invited Duke on New Yen. There you go. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, sorry, my, my name is a bit hard to pronounce because um, I'm an international freshman here. Uh, I've just come to Houston and I'm currently interning with Paula in Urban Harvest. Um, in order to like create some Tableau um, chart for the nonprofit. Um, actually, I'm pretty new to Tableau, so I have not really um, tested out all the graphs in order to say what is my favorite. So uh, I think, yeah, uh, I will probably make up my mind a bit later on when I like practice enough. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I'll pass on to the um, Maru, if that's correct. I think that's the last person, uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, this is Marul. I work for uh, US Cellular based out of Chicago. I have been using Tableau for around five years now. Uh, I use uh, I use all types of charts. Uh, for my currently, I'm using Maps a lot. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but I do use everything <laughs> across uh, everything available in Tableau. Thank you. I think that's everybody. Welcome. Um, and, and we are both glad you're here. And I'll pass it over to Jessica for some prizes. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Kristen. As I shared, my name's Jessica, and my favorite graph or chart to use is a dot plot. I wanted to play along, so I appreciate dot plots a lot. Um, so we do have giveaways. We're excited. We have four $25 gift cards to the Tableau um, store, so you have e-gift cards. So I'm going to share a screen so we can see our, but I think I have everybody. Lexi, Travis, Paula. So we, um, there's a high chance of getting of winning a door prize. So let me share screen so we can see the wheel of fun happening here. Um, all right, so tap to spin and we'll see who wins. Happy Friday, Lexi. Um, just. If you drop your email address in the chat, I'm sure I have it on the event page too, but if you want to drop where you want me to send the e-gift card, I'll send those over. Um, but let's, we have three more. So that was one winner. Let's spin the wheel again. All right. Yay, Travis. And Friday to you as well. All right, two more, two more gift cards. There's a lot you can get on the Tableau store too. So that $25 will go far. All right. All right, Duke, you're you're the other winner. Congratulations. Welcome. And last spin, last door prize. Let's see. All right, congratulations, Michael. Well, 
hopefully that was a fun way to get started. Congratulations to all the winners. We'll send those e gift cards to you guys over um, very shortly. But I just am so thankful that everybody attended today. We're really excited for our presentation. So Lee, Lee Feinberg, early, he introduced himself earlier. He's with Division Decision Biz. He's going to walk us through, kind of um, walk us through his presentation and then also an interactive demonstration with Paula. So I'm excited. So I'm just going to hand it over to him to get us sure. started. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad we can jump right in. Yeah, so I'll I'll come back and I'll answer the question now because it's an important part of what Paula and I are going to do for about the next 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, my, my answer, I said, I don't have a favorite chart because for me, it's always whatever communicates your message the best. So I, 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 I don't lean towards anything in particular. In fact, uh, I, I don't even think about many times what's in Tableau if you look at the chart types that are built in, because sometimes you have to come up with something that's a little bit different than what you can get just from, say, clicking on a couple of, of the menu options. Sometimes you have to be a little bit more creative in how you can combine things. And so I never like to pin myself down to anything in particular. And what we're what Paula and I are going to do today, and and I'll let her introduce herself a little bit more, but I'll I'll tell you a couple things first. She's very brave because she's volunteered uh, to do this with me. It's not something that we've rehearsed. Uh, I will say we have met a couple days ago just to sync up, but. Uh, there's nothing here that's planned out. So neither of us kind of know where this is going to go. We're just going to have a conversation and look at one of the dashboards that she's been working with. And what I'm going to do is introduce you to a different way of thinking about how you use your data and how you start to build either individual charts and especially dashboards as they as they come together and hopefully you'll take away not only a few tips on on how to think about that as it relates to your work and then also maybe some specific things in tableau you might pick up some little tips and tricks here and there and i also want to encourage you to jump in so uh, if we're talking about something and you have a question uh, whether it's a something that we're showing in tableau that you're you we go by too quickly or just something that you have that's similar to what you're doing at work, it's important to share that because other people can always learn by hearing what their colleagues are doing. I find that that's uh, usually one of the best ways to learn. And also you, then you don't feel like you're alone with that particular problem when you know that other people are, are dealing with those kinds of things. Uh, it is being recorded. So, you know, if there's something you ever wanna go back to, you'll be able to go check it out again if, if it's, you know, if it's something that's detailed that we kind of miss and don't have a chance to, to go back over. So I'll let Paula introduce herself and then we'll, we'll just jump in and get the most out of our time. Well, um, thank you so much, Lee. I'm like super excited about just having the opportunity to look at our uh, food access dashboard. So Urban Harvest, maybe you already know a little bit about that. Um, we are a nonprofit. We have farmers markets. We have uh, food access programming through uh, Double Up Houston, Double Up. And I think this is kind of like important for, for us to jump into the dashboard. So Double Up Houston is a SNAP incentive program. It, SNAP is, is formerly known as food stamps. And in 2019, uh, Urban Harvest launched Double Up Houston, which provides 50% off in fruits and veggies for uh, families or individuals enrolled in SNAP. So it was a federal grant that we received through Sustainable Food Center in Austin, and they required so much data um, and so many like so much information that we started building our spreadsheet. And today our spreadsheet looks very good, like we have a lot of data, but I was really struggling to find a way to to get that data into like snapshots that we could use for grant writing, grant reporting and report to our team. And so that's kind of like how, our, how this food access dashboard 
came into place. I joined Urban Harvest a year ago, and that was exactly the time that I was like, you know, we need to use Tableau or some sort of data visualization tool. So you're gonna, I'm not gonna take anything personal. So you just go and just try to destroy them because we really want to improve them. And yeah, we're very excited. Great. Yeah, yeah so, and so am I, because one of the, the reasons I was glad to connect with uh, a user group that wasn't just that was more focused in nonprofit is because I've always liked working in this space because everybody who works in nonprofits does it for the most people that I've met because they're really trying to make a difference in their particular cause. And I and I like that, right? We're change, you know, you're trying to change the world in a real way. I mean, it's certainly good for companies that are for profit, but I just kind of have a particular uh, love for the nonprofit world be, because of that. So it's a good contribution for me to make as well to, to help out in, in a little bit of an indirect way. So I'm going to start, we're not going to jump right into the dashboard yet because I just want to learn a little bit more about the background of that and what your intentions are. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions and just, you know, just answer as candidly as you're, you're comfortable asking. They're not, they're not hard questions. Uh, so, and, and obviously no one, I haven't studied the dashboard and no one else has, has seen it. So we're all kind of on the level playing field. So just give us a feel for why was it, why was this particular dashboard built in the first place? And I'm going to be taking some notes while we go here too. So just kind of give us a little background of what the whole point of it was. So we have, so it was built basically to kind of like it was like a little bit of a selfish um, development in the first place because I was just spending a lot of time on like grant reporting. So every time a grant was asking me, how many customers have you, I will just have to go to the database and filter and build pivot tables and then delete the pivot table because the dashboard is connected to a Google form. And if you have a pivot table on a Google, on a Google form, it crashes the dashboard. So I was like, you know what, like I need a place where I can just go sort by day and have like the metrics ready to go. So it started that way, but then uh, my boss was like, Paula, this is really cool and it should be somewhere else. <laughs> so we started uh, our urbanharvestmetrics.org to bring that dashboard into a website. And because this data is not like sensitive in some ways, we decided to have it password protected. Um, it's also being developed as a tool to uh, develop accountability with our food access team. So we clap when we have like good months, when we have a lot of customers, and then we look at data when, when, when we don't, we want, we, when we don't see the return over our investment. The other really cool way that is um, why it was developed because today we are we're investing in marketing strategies. So for example, a mailer or a flyer, and we spend a lot of money on billboards and we want to see if people is actually coming back to coming to our markets in the first place. So it was like, let's look at that in real time. So that's kind of like where everything started. That's, that's interesting to uh, see kind of the progression and, and that's typical too of a lot of places when there's, whether it's small companies or, or large ones, there's, some effort that goes on and and then it starts to blossom once people start to see oh i didn't know that that was possible right especially if you've been living in a world of excel or some other kind of spreadsheet where it is fairly limited on how you can interact and view the information and and so it's a uh, and it's good to see how it took off too so i'm curious when you say who well you said you wanted to have accountability with the teams. What was the name of those teams again? It's called our food access team, and it's formed by the director of food access and our mobile market manager. And okay, and you, also, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Yeah, and it was kind of like the idea I was envisioning to have to be able for them to see how are they doing and to be able to see, I don't know, just like, 
I guess just like data in a better way without them t having to spend time on data analysis because mm. not like they should be focusing on serving our communities, not on data analysis. And I didn't want to focus on data analysis with small requests. So that was kind of like the idea. And then kind of like one other uh, vision that I have with this um, dashboard is our double app sites is farmers markets or farm stands that operate with us, the double app Houston program. I thought it would be amazing if we could kind of like help them see how are they doing so they can say, oh my God, we're kind of like going down, what's going on? So that's another customer that I haven't been able to focus a lot or maybe a user, but I see opportunities for building data capacity there too. So next project. Yeah, yeah that's great. And uh, so one thing about those food access teams too, you use the word ROI. Um, so you're saying return on investment. What does that what does that mean? I mean, I know what the term means. Maybe I'm not sure everybody else does, but what does ROI mean in your world, or at least with those teams? The way we are measured by is basically the the like the number of new customers that we have new and recurring customers. Like we're our whole goal is to be able to offer double up to like maybe our cab will be if all snap shoppers uh, knew about double up and if all of our snap shoppers in Houston visited our farmers markets and promoted the local economy that would be the ideal but today mm. like we don't have uh, we count the number of customers and average per uh, amount purchase and other metrics and maybe we can kind of like get there but that's how we measure is like how many people we're actually serving on a time basis and how uh, how the marketing channels like our billboards or mailers or word of mouth that we're trying to be more um, intentional about that one uh, mm -hmm. how we actually uh, bring more customers through those channels and learn from that process. So you know that you're your, your, I'll say customer base is anybody who's in the SNAP program. Is that kind of how you look at it? Correct. So that's kind of your top goal. If you could hit every single one of those people, then you would know what your, what your scope is. Okay. With that, that's helpful because a lot of times people don't know, like, you know, your market potential essentially at any, at any given time, uh, what that could be. So, uh, I, that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, Okay, so let me ask you a question that might sound a little bit strange. So if you had, say, one dash, let's say you were only allowed to have uh, one dashboard, okay, and that dashboard could only talk about one of these areas you've discussed. Okay. Uh, because of course we want to make sure it has all the right information, but that's the only one you could have. Which, which of these things that you've mentioned so far would you say is the most important, the one, the one that you would give to build that, that one dashboard and talk about? I will say total number of, I mean, the thing is like, for example, for my grant reporting, like just having it, the date sorting and kind of like the amounts, it helps me report to our funders. So it's something that I that I have to report. But thinking about like our um, our programs metrics and like how how can we get better eventually? Those two things, I wish they were more connected. They're not. So I would just leave the dollars aside and I would just focus on like customer retention and and ROI, which is like marketing uh, related to number of customers and number of new customers because qualitative data, like a customer experience, I don't think we are there yet. We, mm -hmm. we are doing it, but we, we're not doing it on a dashboard. So I would just say customers retention. <laughs> customer retention, yeah. yeah, okay, I'll buy that. And is your, I'm just, this is just more of something I'm curious about as it's coming up. How does, 
that performance of say, you know, you're, you're getting new customers and, and retaining them, does that affect your, the grants that you get or are any of your grants tied to that? Or does it just kind of affect it in the future because someone who might be giving you a grant says, I wanna understand how you guys have been doing and they look at it and they say, oh, you're not really very good at this, which could mean, which could go either way, right? You could say, we're not good at it yet because we need more money to do it. Or they might say, you've had enough, you've had enough money and you're not doing well, right? I don't, I, no, I don't, I don't know the back and forth of that. I'm just curious how it, how it all kind of ties together to the actual getting money to run, to run the business, if you will. Yeah. So that's why, for example, like number of customers is a very raw and cold and hard for us to digest data because it's not very high compared to the to the funding we get. If we were able to compare our total cost of our food access program budget over a year and then the total number of customers that we serve, we will be like, it doesn't look good, but I think the retention rate is one of our most important ones because if people is coming back to a market, that means something. And then mm -hmm. we measure the number of customers. But for us, it's like if we're able to to do that, like to be able to have people to come back to the market, that's I think the ultimate uh, the ultimate metric for our performance. All right, so you're saying you you found a way to have good retention, so that's a good starting point. And then if that continues and you can bring in more customers, then that will support things in in a good way. Yeah, that make that makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let me just take a, a stop, and I, I want to back up and uh, one see if anybody has any questions. But I'll just give you kind of why I'm going through this. And it goes back again to that idea of, I don't have a favorite chart. Uh, the whole point of doing any of this kind of work that we do, any kind of analysis, any kind of presentation is to get a message across. It's to, to communicate some set of ideas and doing it visually, the idea is to do it quickly, right? Rather than reading lots of words. And, and I'm sure you've heard all those kinds of things about you know, how people process images and, and so forth. And so what I'm really interested in is understanding more kind of the, why, why is this, you heard me ask these questions, you know, what was the reason if you're doing this? Why is this here? What is it, you know, how are you thinking about it? And I, and then I asked that one at the end, which is the, you know, what if you could only have one, right? And, and, and the reason I obviously, well, sometimes maybe you can really only have one, maybe you don't have enough resources or what have you, but the, the reason I ask that is to really get into somebody's head of all the things they've listed out. Because what tends to happen a lot of times is you have a lot of information and there's this, right? And, I, and I'm guessing when we look at what you've done, you, this is, we're gonna see a little bit of this is, right? She said, I wanna, I have to give information to my bosses. I have to give some stuff for grant writing. I want to measure the, the accountability. I want to look at our marketing, right? It's a lot of stuff. And so sometimes people say, I just want to cram it all in. I want to have it all on one dashboard. Uh, and I, if you think about the idea of communication, just in general, the way we do things, even if you're doing, say, something in a PowerPoint, You've probably heard and learned, you know, put one message on a page, right? So that it's clear of what you're talking about. And, it, and we should use those same ideas when we're presenting visuals, especially because everything is online, right? So there's, most people have gotten away from printing paper and things like that. And I think years ago, there was a tendency to put more on a page because people are like, I got to print pages and it's in color and, it's a, you know, it's a waste, right? If I have to print that much, so let me put more on the page. Now, it's, it doesn't cost anything to have an, a separate page. Um, the cost of putting too much on a page is that it gets confusing because I'm looking at one, I'm looking at a lot of things. It might be talking about different ideas, right? And so I like to package it up and, and really try to focus on one idea when it's, po when it's possible. And, and then the next page, think if you think about it as a chapters in a story, chapter one is gonna be about 
this. Chapter two is going to be about this and so on. Uh, that's that's kind of where, where we're going to go today and kind of lead through this. But until we really know what Paola and her team think about as, as kind of the top priorities, that's where we need to start. So what, I will just jump in real quick to say, you make me really think about the whole purpose of this program. And it's really about increasing healthy food consumption. So if there was a way to show that in, in the story, because today is like a tiny graph or a table that nobody understands how to read it. So it would be awesome if, if, we, if we could talk about that too, because I'm struggling with how to, because it's such a long-term and it's usually not connected to what we do. So, I mean, it's, it's a long-term outcome. So if there's a way to reflect that the work of Double Up Houston is really promoting healthier habits, that would be amazing. <laughs> So say that again, it's to show the... the that Double Up increases healthy food consumption and promotes healthier habits. So basically, low-income communities are becoming healthier as a result of Double Up Houston. Mm. It's kind of like a, it's hard to connect those two dots in a dashboard with yeah. people. But. Yeah. I like how you kept digging with the questions and I was like, and especially that last question of like, if you could only have one, I was like, whoo. And I've seen Paolo's dashboards too. And I'm like, oh, how can you only have just one? You have so much information. Like it was, I, I'm impressed you were able to like really get there. But I think those questions really helped. Like I'm, you know, seeing a little bit more of like specifically what she's, what would be a value from the dashboard. And I'm glad you came back to this too, that you know, what the rethinking, you know, even how this ties back to the, you know, the whole reason that the organization exists, right? And that, uh, you know, if you could show these pieces, right? Especially if you could show these to uh, potential donors, things like that, right? Uh, or even for your own information to put your own story, your story together, if you're going out to donors, right? Or your internal meetings to know, are we, are we getting there, right? And then there's the whole, and this makes me think about, you know, then you have to say, well, how would you show that, right? So if you say, we wanna show that we're promoting healthy food consumption, how do I know that? Well, right, what would, if, if you were showing this to me and you said, Lee, look, look how we're promoting healthy food consumption, what would you have to put on there what, what, to, to show me like, and then I look at it and go, oh yeah, I see that, right? So those statements sound specific, like kind of when, in your mission kind of goal thing, but when you start to pull them apart and think about it from a data side, sometimes they get to be pretty tricky uh, uh, in there. And, and, and there's not necessarily right or wrong. And if the question, and I say you kind of shrug your shoulders a little bit, and sometimes, and, and a lot of any kind of situation like this, not just a nonprofit, right? The, what happens is sometimes people get stuck when they say, I don't know. And so in that case, it means there is no right or wrong answer, but based on what you do know, you can make some educated assumptions, right? So, okay, you make assumptions and then you just have to, you have to write those assumptions down so they're not, so that they're known and then if somebody's looking at it and they say, well, Paula, how that does, why would you choose that? And you go, well, I, I, I chose it because of this. Lee, do you have a better idea or what's your thinking behind that, right? And then you can have a conversation. And as you do that and you learn over time, it gets narrower and you know, you, everybody kind of gets it closer to what they want. So uh, even if you don't have something specific, it's always good to start that way because nobody can tell you you're wrong because it's not there, right? They can only challenge your assumptions at, at that point. So yeah, that one's, that one's interesting. That's very interesting to, uh, to dig into. Okay, anybody else have any thoughts or questions that, to react to what we've done so far? All right, so let's, let's this is a good, good start. We might come back and, and do some questioning in here, but I want to jump in and, and I'll share the I'll share your so Paula shared her um, her packaged workbook with me, 
so that I can just do some changes while we, we talk through this. Uh, does everybody know what a packaged workbook is in Tableau? Or I should say, does anybody not know? I know Duke, you may not know because you said you're, you're really new. Okay, so I guess we're, we're, we're in good shape there. All right, so let's go and share this one. All right. So this is Paola's dashboard that she sent me. And it looks like it's made up of about seven or eight different worksheets. So I think this is a, a good start. And let me just check one thing here. Okay, so you're, your title is customer. Well, I guess you weren't even necessarily showing this, but it's kind of customer dashboard. Uh, so one thing that I that I like to do to, if you imagine somebody sees this, you want to put them in the right frame of mind of it's kind of what we've been talking about. When they read the title, it's like, you know, you open a book or something, or you look at a, an article on a on your news feed, there's a headline of some sort, right? And the headline is there to start cluing you in about what, what comes after. So I always like to start off with a headline. I love it when you can make it a question because a question starts to make you more curious, right? It's just kind of a natural thing versus a statement. Again, no right or wrong here. It's sometimes a preference, depends on your audience, but I like to, to do something like that. Uh, so I, I'm wondering, Paula, what you think, and, and I don't know what information is on here, so we'll look into that. Do you have information on here that you think could start to talk about the, the healthy food consumption? Or is that kind of, you realized, wow, that's what I'd like to get to, and maybe that's, that's not here yet? Mm -hmm. So the, so the food access dashboards are uh, three, I think I share two. So the healthy food consumption, it, it will be like the data that comes through the forms will go into the vendor's dashboard. So I guess talking about the healthy food consumption here, um, we'll have to maybe kind of like connect those two spreadsheets. But I think this is kind of like from the customer side. Well, I think I'm kind of like mm, just talking as I talk, I understand that it, they should be connected because if not, how can we talk about customers and not in, and not connecting that with increasing food access? So I'll just write it down. But yeah, I mean, the customer's dashboard doesn't have information about the, uh, what type of product they purchased. That comes from okay. the vendor's dashboard because okay. I think that they should be connected. Yeah, it sounds like it. Okay, so maybe we'll focus more. I see here new and returning customers. And so maybe we'll focus a little bit more on that part of what you talked about before, just for mm -hmm. the sake of it being here and not wanting to get uh, tied tied into doing data manipulation. And then we end up not getting into the the, the guts of this uh, that, we, that we want to. Uh, so I'm trying to think here just in real time what kind of title might be good to represent this. Uh, and so the thing that you talked about was, uh, you know, customer retention. Uh, do you have a certain goal for customer retention? No, no. Um, I guess we don't, the sky is the limit, how, how many? The, mo the higher amount of times that someone shows up to the market, the better for us. I don't think there's a limit. I will say, okay. the, yeah, the higher, the better. Sure, of course. Um, so let's just, just for the sake of it, I'm just gonna write, you know, are we retaining customers? Something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I even, well, even you said the definition of retention is that they're coming to the market. Is it the number of times they come or is it the frequency they come or kind of both? Like how do you, what's your definition of retention even? 
So how that is calculated is if each each customer when they show up at any of our markets, we they each of them has a unique EBT, which is the four last digits of their SNAP card. And okay. that I just did a count this thing um, kind of like formula to actually count uh, how the average of those of those four digits. So for example, if the four digit number one, two, three, four showed up three times, that that's a number three, then another EBT number showed up five times and the other one six and two, then that is the calculation of the retention rate, I think. Okay. So the definition of retention is really just that they come back. Exactly. And it's within, they came back within what, a year, within a month? What's the? Since the program started. Since the program started. So if I came one time in the first month and I didn't come again until two years later, that would be I have been, I've still been retained because I'm more than one. Yes. Okay. Are we? That's a good point too. How, like, yeah, that frequency that you're saying is very interesting because we would like to see if we can use that somehow to plan for our marketing outreach, like plan your monthly shopping at our market or make it a something like a family event. I don't know. I'll just write it down. <laughs> It would be coming to a market, right? Mm -hmm. This is going to end up being very long, but I'm just writing it out. We could always change it. Uh, and the other thing that that doesn't show, if someone, for example, goes to one market and then goes to another market and then goes to another market, that still counts as one, as like the whole thing. So, I mean, it counts as three or counts as only one. It will count as three. Okay, but that's good though. Okay. Coming to any. So that's kind of what you told, I think that's what you said to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Probably too long to fit on. So that's a, you know, to me, this is, I always like to go for clarity. We can always, you can always change the language a little bit later. Uh, so that's, but if I look at that, I'm like, okay, I know what we're gonna try to, to get to here. It doesn't mean that that's the only thing you're gonna talk about, but everything that you put on here is meant to support that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I would do, uh, and I'll just put a little placeholder for it up here is, if we can squeeze it in there. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it. Uh, just gonna move these little things around. By the way, if, if, if I do something in Tableau and someone's not sure about it, you know, please ask me to back up and, and I'll, I'll do it because I'm probably not gonna explain too much. I'm just putting this little I here uh, as like a information or a question mark or help. I think it'd be good if you just have it there online, uh, one for your own teams and or looking at, like I said to you, if you say retention, mm -hmm. well, you don't want to put like all that in here, but if you have a little question, right, if it says help or question mark, people know what that means mm -hmm. because this is on a browser, right? It's on the web. They see that on every other website. They, they know what to do with it. And so in within there, you could put more information like the definition of retention or whatever else you want to toss in there. Mm -hmm. And then people could go over it. And if they're new to this, right, you don't need to do it every time you come in because once you do it a couple of times, most people will know, but it's good to have it there uh, as, as a handy thing, right? Especially because then people will call you up and say, well, what's retention mean? Or what's this mean? Or what's this mean? And mm -hmm. it can all, it can all just be in there. And that's pretty common common practice. Uh, so that's, a, I think, a good start. Uh, and 
So here though, so let's just say I happen to change the time frame the way you have it, that would also change the, the span of where you looked at that. And would that, would that change the, this idea of retention? So if, if I moved it say, you know, to January, but I came back here in October, then it wouldn't count me anymore. Is that what would happen? Uh, correct. Okay, so it kind of gets, yeah, it gets because then if I come over here, you only if I come at the end, you count me then, but you don't count me in the beginning. But I've kind of retained because it's mm -hmm. I yeah. am coming back for the second time, but you're filtering me out. So just something to be careful for. Correct. Yeah. Just the operational kind of thing, which the logic, right, of the filter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, how it's going to work and what it's going to affect um, will be big for retention because retention has, you know, it can be a little, it can be a little bit tricky mm -hmm. uh, in that sense. Uh, so let's let's just talk about this from a just from a uh, going through some of the things that are on here. So from what you told me about retention, it seems like. Uh, this particular chart here might be, would you say, would you say that would be the, I'll do this kind of one question, one thing question again. So if you could only show one piece of information on this whole page, what would be the most important thing to talk about? I know you said you have different customers internally to think about. Mm -hmm. I think putting the healthy food consumption aside, I will say, the, the re, that's the new returning customers table is very much our return over investment, like investment, not knowing what that means, but the return at the end of the day is like more customers, good, our mm -hmm. EP likes it. Less customer, problem, we need to figure that out. So that's kind of like, I will say that's the most important. So this one or this one, sorry. I will say the, the, the new returning customers uh, chart. Chart, okay, so this one, okay. So can you tell us, can you describe what, what's on here? This says distinct, so this is your count. Okay, I see that. Mm -hmm. And then green and yellow means uh, yellow are new, like bright yellow new, but I should have the legend somewhere. Mm -hmm. And the green means uh, returning customers, which is green, like safe, secured, but I guess, yeah, it just, for example, there, if someone was new in August and then they came back in September, that person moves from the yellow, now it's a returning customer and it's colored green the next month. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily accurate. Maybe it's, there's some back end analysis that it needs to be improved. But when I throw this number in, I was like, oh, great. Like I wanted to see basically the, the outcome of that one is to say new versus returning customers. Great, we're, like, we're increasing the number of new customers compared to returning customers. And, mm -hmm. um, Makes yeah. sense. And what's the, what's the red mean? I don't think uh, that's data not available. I, they, so that comes from the from a Google form that it was like, are you new to the market? Yes, no, yes, no. And there were entries that were empty, like no. Uh, okay. So this represents the total number of customers in any month? Exactly. The, the number of new customers in that month. And then the well, other one? The number of returning customers. customers. Right. I just mean the total, 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 like the number that would be at the top of this. Exactly. Bar. That would be a total number of cost unique, like the count, the unique count of the EBT number, which will be the number of customers. Okay. So, wow, July of this year, you had a huge jump. Yeah. We don't know why, but we know we did. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's. Yeah. Right. So that's part of what we want to get out of this. Mm -hmm. So, so here's the, so the reason, again, I asked that question about the one thing. So when, and this is based on research from 
how people usually look at a web page. So when they start, they start at the upper left and kind of move down, well, opposite way if you're looking at me, but they start at the upper left and either kind of move like zigzag towards the bottom, or you may see things where they also like an F pattern. So they look kind of like down and across. What all that means is that the thing that you really want someone to see, the most important thing should be in the upper left corner. So kind of like after they read the title and they get clued in on what it's about, that's the first thing they should hit because you want to make that connection between the two pieces. Mm -hmm. So if I've seen yours isn't is okay because you're, I mean, we can move it, it'll be, make it better, but yours is at least kind of at the top. You know, some people put it down here, whatever that one most important thing is. And I said, well, why is it down there? And just like, well, it's kind of like where it fit or mm -hmm. I don't know, I just put it there, kind of an answer. So uh, that's why it's always good to, to really ask yourself that question. So let's just for now, let's just kind of move it over here mm -hmm. for the sake of the, the discussion. And we'll start making some space and just do that. And now let's talk about this because you told me a few things. You, you told me you wanted to be able to see uh, the the total change, and you also want to know if one is going up or down, right? And you'll go through, and you know you can make some adjustments. You'll look at your calculations, and that's always something that you'll you'll want to, I think, probably play around with. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I I think is easier. There's a couple things going on here, so let's talk about this particular chart. You have. And this is a thing I, I'm not a fan of stacked bar charts a lot of times because you try to have a lot of information in there, but then it's hard to get to really what you want. So you want to see the trend of the total. You want to see the trend of the new and the returning, and then also the the, the I don't have I don't have enough data isn't as important, but maybe that's you know if that gets too much, then your whole information is going to be bad too, right? If you don't have enough people filling that out. It's going to be hard to track what's going on. So that is important to get a handle on. And it looks like you've got some, it, it hasn't been a problem for a while. So maybe there was something about the form, who knows? Mm -hmm. So instead of putting all of this into one stacked bar chart, I prefer to, I think it's cleaner when you break it up. And I'll just show you what that looks like, right? Just so you can get the idea, you know, whether you decide to use these things or not in the end is is not, uh, uh, will be your decision. Uh, the other thing, we'll, so let's do this first though. Um, let's call this count of customers. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna label, we'll, we'll label each one of these. And you'll see the other reason I'm going to do that is because then we can also, we can play around with what we show over here. Uh, I'm not sure, well, one, I'm not a fan of sideways things, mm -hmm. uh, but also if you think about your audience who's reading this, mm -hmm. I try not to assume that the audience knows what I'm talking about. What I mean here is they might not, know what distinct count means. I don't, I don't know, they may or may not. I mean, that's, a, that's what Tableau threw in here, mm -hmm. uh, right? And it does that a lot. It puts its own terminology in there. Mm -hmm. So I always, I'm always trying to be careful. And I think you actually did a good job looking at the whole thing. I think there's, you know, you've done, you've written this out as a nice question. Uh, timestamp, maybe we'll, we can tweak, although maybe that means something to people directly. So I think you do have a, some good things on here in terms of trying to stay away from uh, call it techno speak mm -hmm. but even here like geospatial distribution maybe people know what it means but it sounds a little scary i will say right? like where do our customers come from like a question beautiful yeah i love that and i'm just jumping to that one because we talk about this but that's great where do i could say better our customers come from and that's awesome. I mean, who's that's you can't get my, any clearer than that. 
So I, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and even count of customers, we can probably say, you know, we can probably come up with something better. So let's take a look at, at playing around with this chart. So let's go into it. By the way, people remember just jump in, ask any questions as, as we go through here. I want this to be for you as well, because you might be starting to relate to some of these things and uh, it, I'm sure it will help if you can. Uh, so I want to ask you one question that I think um, you have a good insight. So I know that I, you're not the first one that asked me, what does that red mean? And then it's like, is there a way, what would you recommend me to do? Just exclude that data to be able to show new versus recurring? Or would you include them under recurring by default? Or maybe that's not appropriate. Just because I want to get out, like I don't want to point people in the right, wrong direction. With so you're asking about these NAs, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, there's kind of two ways you could look at it. One is, it seems as I was reviewing this, it seems to have gone away as a problem. So that's mm -hmm. one thing. I mean, I, I because it hasn't showed up in in um, almost a year. Mm -hmm. So maybe, again, I don't know if somebody changed the form or what have you, uh, but I'll show you the idea I have in mind might help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we could, you could decide whether to keep it or not or, or something, uh, how you wanted to, right? Because if you took this out th right here, this is a big number. These are almost close in terms of their total. But if you took this out, all of a sudden it's going to drop a lot. So it is going to affect because it does count towards your total. So if you just completely remove it, it's also going to give a false report, I guess, of really where you're at. So you have to be careful right. about that kind of thing. Yeah. So here's how, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was also kind of wondering, like you have bigger numbers in June and July in the NA. So I think taking it out, like what are you missing from your bigger story like is there something that happened in those months of why you're getting more in a and like just from like a performance improvement like continuous quality improvement standpoint like are you missing something by you know excluding that in the dashboard mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i agree i i feel like that could also be like a different chart so kind of like to look at that or just like a different conversation with our double up team to see actually what happened there so we can prevent. But yes, yeah, interesting, it happened mostly during those two months that are summer, maybe there was like a turn up, turnaround, I mean, staff turnaround that happened during someone that left for a vacation <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that led to people not knowing how to complete the form. That's my guess, which might be. Yeah, that's why it could be, it, maybe it's not an issue anymore, but I, I definitely wouldn't want you to, to lose the, the, the data. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let's yeah. take, so yeah, go, did you have one more comment? Mm -mm, that's not I'm good. Okay, so in terms of trends, so if you think about breaking this up and if you just wanna show trends, I always think trends are better as line charts. Mm -hmm. That's just naturally the way people would think about that more. So I would I would prefer to to do something like this. Although that's oof, that's that's a little tough to read, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe what we would do is something. I'm just going to undo that. So maybe if we broke this up onto uh, three, three separate line charts and take a look at it that way. And how important is it for you to break it up by year in this particular, is it, is it really helpful? Because you- I, th I think what I was trying to kind of like point out is like, look how we're doing. We are growing. That's kind of like the point I was trying to make. But oh, okay. And kind of like getting more granular at the end because it's like a month by month comparison, it helps us. But mm -hmm. go, uh, looking back to previous years, uh, we just want to see maybe the, the general one. 
I don't think we're going to compare July to July or January to January. Mm. Um, that's kind of okay. like the next step. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, all right. So here's I'll, I'll, here's what I've got in mind. Let's uh, let me kind of walk you through this as we as we build it. So what I have in mind is one bar chart that shows you just the the total. Mm -hmm. right not broken up right mm -hmm. and that will solve the problem of seeing the red greens and yellows and i'm going to come back and talk about red green and yellow in a second make sure i do that and then i see three charts below that maybe three lines that will help break up the trend to to mm -hmm. see this so uh, i'm going to show you how i think we can do this uh, and get it all onto one chart. And I'm not sure, have you used measure names and measure values before? Mm, I know what they mean. And I know they kind of like, they are like automated by Tableau. It's like auto-generated. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Correct. Exactly. So I'll, I'll show you a, kind of how I'm thinking about, about using that here. And I might not be able to explain it in complete detail, but Think about them as placeholders, and you'll mm -hmm. see how that how that comes out. And you're right; it's something that's not in your data that Tableau puts in there for you automatically. And so, let's go here, and I'm going to kind of show you how I think this can work. Uh, and I might go a little a little fast. Uh, if we do that, oh, you must have had the. Okay, and then we will put that, let's see. I'm trying to think out loud here. Measure, sorry, is this your first time shopping at this market? Okay, so those are your, those are your three over here. Mm -hmm. Got it. And then we've got something else going on. Okay, All right, and so we'd only need one type, one value, customer, that's still that one, customer IDL, that looks like that. Okay, that looks a little more like what we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. And I think what I wanna do is not have them bro broken up by year maybe mm -hmm. so if we uh, go and get rid of month and put this one as a month and year we'll get the same kind of thing i think maybe that's looking a little cleaner yeah we'll put we'll fix the dates down here and then all we'll do up here actually we didn't even need to do the uh, measure value stuff so Forget I even said that. <laughs> this was this was easier. Uh, uh, what we'll do up in this one is we'll get rid of the color, and we'll fix the size a little bit, um, maybe something like that. And if we just make the color a little lighter, okay. And then up here. What we can do is we can put the labels. Nice. All right. And on the axis here, I'm going to get rid of this long mm -hmm. title. And then same here, because we really don't need it anymore. Because we put count of customers at the top. Mm -hmm. And now is this, this says 400,000 mm -hmm. and this says 103, that number doesn't, some, one of these numbers doesn't seem right. Uh, it is some customer ID is actually adding it instead of counting, which is in the rows, the second one. This one. Yeah, it shouldn't be some because if not, it's adding up the, the digits of the- Oh, okay. Part. So it's this same, same one here. Yeah, I will say you can. Mm -hmm. 
like that. Okay, that's yeah. better. Okay, all right, so let's fix this again. Get rid of that. Okay. And then let's put, just to make it a little nicer, I'm going to format the dates. Again, these are subjective. This is what I kind of like. Um, I just tend to put like, I don't know if you've seen this kind of shorthand. No, that's cool. Yeah, I've all, yeah. That is a huge improvement. <laughs> so you can control kind of how much is cool. being said down here. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so that's a couple. And then let's see, I'm just looking at my screen. Okay. And then we can get rid of month of timestamp, I think also. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need that because I think people know that those are months. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my idea for replacing that particular chart. Yeah, I'm gonna look uh, awesome on my next staff meeting. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, and this definitely makes sense for me to just like split them up and, and you can, is it possible maybe I can add like the, a, a definition of like the title for the second chart to kind of like show the new versus re returning. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's see how we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how we can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back to the dashboard, and I'll make a copy of the dashboard, mm -hmm. and also. So first thing is, we want to put that new chart in here. Mm -hmm. And there's an easy way to do that. Uh, so if we just, if you see this little double ended arrow, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. swaps out, it puts this sheet in and just swaps it out. The reason that's helpful is because it, you don't have to, sometimes when you, if you take a chart out and put one in, you know, the whole thing starts moving around and drives you nuts. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way of, of helping reduce that from, from going on. And so there's a couple of things we need to do here. One, we need to get that color legend out. So if we go here and just say color legend, and it's not as helpful over here. You always want to get the legend as close to the, the, the part where you are. Now, if we remove this, if we move this timestamp thing just out of the way, right, it's kind of there, but it takes up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So I like to turn it into a floating mm -hmm. container, if you're familiar with floating. Mm -hmm. So if we turn, make it floating, and then you can just kind of do something like this. You'll have, we'll have to play with the title a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's kind of what we want. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you can use up as much space as possible for your chart. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now we've got this, just we threw this up here out of the way. So let's figure out how to deal with that for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I would do is format these uh, times. Yeah. Uh, just because they're a little bit, uh, they're a little too big, I think. I actually need the time, we just need the date. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. So let's go back to maybe this chart. Mm -hmm. And then it's the timestamp you said, right? Mm -hmm. So it would be this one. So if we come in and Let's see, we format it here, I guess. Format and pane. And date. Oh. Let's see, where do I want to form down? Just single value. Format filter and controls. Oh no, that's not okay. I have to come back. I'm forgetting for a second where the format is for, yeah. for that. Oh, we can just do it right here. Sorry. Uh, if we just do default properties and the date format mm -hmm. under timestamp, uh, we should get rid of that as well. We could just say that's standard short date. 
Let's see. Let's go back here. There we go. And then I'm going to, so that's got the way you want it. And then let's go back to uh, floating on this one. And then you'll see what we have. We'll do a little trick. Uh, so this is something I like to do. Let's just, so you see here, it says, are customers coming to any market more than once? And it really is not since the program started. It's depending on how you want to define it. Yeah. Right? You would mm -hmm. say once during this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, what you do is you, let's get rid of the little title up there. And then you just move that right there. Oh, that's, yeah, that's so much better. And then they can just pick, right? So it's, it's kind of connects the ideas directly rather than having a title and then having the filter. It makes it a lot more obvious mm -hmm. to them because it's just right there. Now, again, you got to be careful about your definitions and stuff, but that's a different, a different situation. All right, so let me stop for a minute and see kind of your, your thinking. I'm gonna just move that over. What are your thoughts? I love it. It's so much better. Um, yeah, I think it's more intuitive for, especially for like our food access team to come in and say, and maybe feel more confident to play with the data or just like mm. move things down. Makes more sense. Cool. Uh, the other thing we can do is move that just to the end so that it's, I don't know if you saw what I did, I just dragged it over. Uh, we could even change, and actually I would, so is this your first time? You might even change the titles here. You might change this because this is like retention mm -hmm. and see, they're gonna say yes. And they might think this is retention, it might not be clear. It could be, what about customer type? And then green is recurring customer and yes, is new customers. Something like that, yeah. Because you know what question you asked. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter to me if I'm reading the this, right? You just need to know that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So let's we'll look at, okay. so if we go back here, so that's, is this your first time? That's this question, right? So if we go in and edit the aliases, have you ever done edit aliasing? Uh -huh. Okay, so if we do that, so NA would could be um, did not answer or something like that, yeah. or unknown, maybe unknown. Yes. Now, or undetermined, then this one, no, could be um, new customer. Oh wait, uh, no, no is, return, is returning customer. Even it could be this like is that right? Or new? Or what should it say? No, you tell me what it should say. I'm making it up. It, uh, just returning and new. Yeah. Oh, and then we can kind of like get rid of those repeat, like customer word and and then the question is about like type of customer. So people know that it's returning and new. Yeah. So let's go back here now, and we'll uh, we'll need to put the get rid of that. And oh, there we go. Wait, was it right the first? Oh yeah, it was. Sorry, it was right. And make this a little bigger. And I'm not even sure. So what do you want to put here? Um, what type of mm -hmm. customer type? I think that will be good. Okay. And I would even, even though tab below defaults it to bold or, or medium here, I always like to make, this is just my choice. Mm -hmm. I just like to make it a little lighter mm -hmm. because it's just a title doesn't really need to stand out that much. That's just my opinion. So now, right, we've got the customer type, we've got the total. All right, so we've got 
about 10 or so minutes left. I know we'd spend a lot of time on that one. So let's, and let's talk about what else is on here. Right? Is this your first time that used to be a filter? That one can go away, I think. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So uh, did I add that one by accident, I think? Uh -huh. Yeah. I had it before. Um, oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, but I knew there was a something filter, but you can use the the the, le the legend to kind of like click and highlight that specific. So I think it's that doesn't need to be there. Okay. So you'll work on how to do that. Mm -hmm. So great. All right. So let's just take that out for now. So out of the other pieces that are left here, so again, think about that question. So we got the first part down, right? Count of customers. We wanted to know where we stand, right? You can see, wow, this is great. It really grew. It's pretty easy to, to pick that out now. Yeah. And you can also get a trend, you know, see how these all are going up. And it also makes, this also for me, makes it really clear that this unknown issue went away, mm -hmm. right? There was something going on and then it stopped, right? It's, it's, it's really obvious. So what would be the next piece of information that you think would be the key to have on here? I'll let you choose, you know, it's kind of that, what's next, what's next? I think it would be the retention rate. Uh, so I'm, this actual section in here? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we have here. Okay. So I think that one is is pretty, it to me feels kind of straightforward. Oh, let me show you a little trick. Uh, let's see. Oh, no. Oh, so this is not, oh, these are just individual things. Okay. Why? All right. So let's, so these are all individual worksheets. All right. Is that a better way to do that? I, I was like, yeah. Sounds kind of like repetitive, or is there a way to bring them all? Yes, to there is. Actually, now we'll use measure names and measure values. Okay. So let's go. Let's go to uh, this one and we'll make a copy of it. And so, what are the four? So it's retention rate, mm -hmm. number of customers, number of transactions and uh, average spent. Okay, so we're gonna take, I'll show you how this is gonna work. So you're gonna put this measure names placeholder at the top. So imagine, right, on this dashboard, you have um, columns of data, mm -hmm. okay? So think about that. We wanna put the placeholder there as a start. And then what we're gonna do is fill in the values, okay, below it. And those are going to go on the text. We'll get rid of this one. Now, the problem is it puts all of the ones in here. So the first one was retention, right? And then you had, what was next? Uh, average spent. Spent. Okay, average spent. Actually, uh, logic from left to right, I will say next is number of customers, then transactions, and then average. So number of customers is this one? Yeah. Uh, so that would be off. Some million? Yeah, some customer ID needs to be count. Count, count. okay. Uh, yeah, because then we're not just counting it. Uh, for example, if someone showed up four times at the market and their EBT card is one, two, three, four, we're just gonna count, count them one. So Perfect. I guess it has to be count distinct. There you go. Okay. And then what's next? A number of transactions, which is count of a snap distribution. So this one here, count distinct? Mm, no, I think just total. Total count? Yeah. All right, okay. And then what's the last one? Is the this 22? Uh, yeah, the average. I think some distrib, mm, that looks, it might no. be the AGG calculation one. Uh, where we're here, twenty-two dollars. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah. So what's the name of this one? Calculation one, let's give it a name. Average spent. And that, so let's use the default properties again mm -hmm. for number formatting and make that currency, something like that, right? Yeah, nice. And then, so now we don't need this title. Uh, oops, hide. And then let's fix these measure names. Let's uh, format those a little differently, uh, right? We don't need it to be uh, 30 point. Maybe it's, well, what size is this here? 30 point, oh, okay. Was it that big? Okay. Maybe just because it's, was it that big in here? Oh no, you had it a lot smaller. I was gonna say that would take up a lot of space. Let's make it like, I don't know, 16 for now. And then make it black. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna, oh, black, okay. And then count of snap. So what is this really called? This is number of customers? A number of transactions. Number of transactions. So let's use the alias again. Number of transactions. And then this one is? Number of customers. Number of customers. Okay. And then we can just move that down. And then once we put it in, it'll have enough space. So measure names, so that's these four here. So those are the names corresponding to the, the names of the, the measures, and then it just puts the values in. So now you only need one worksheet instead of four, that's which helps tell you with formatting and moving things around and right all that stuff. So if we go back here, let's get rid of all four of these. And then we'll move this one. Let's just kind of stick it in there for now. Get rid of the title, make it take up the whole width, something like that, maybe. Yeah. And you can fiddle with the, of course, you can fiddle with the formatting and, and so on. So it's starting to get a little clearer now, a um, little bit more straightforward kind of in its approach. I'm watching the clock. I and we only have about five minutes left. So I want to stop. And you and I can talk about this afterwards, you know, a little bit more. So I, I don't want to leave it in the middle, but we'll do that mm -hmm. uh, after. Maybe we'll even record that session and yeah. stick it on with, uh, tack it on to the end of this one. I just want to see if you have any particular questions about what we did or the thinking behind it, or if anybody else has any thoughts that they, when they were, we were going through this, if something jumped out at them and they said, wow, this is, I, I, I could use this and I'm gonna make some changes like this for my, for my work. I really like the emphasis on editing yourself. Um, I know I sometimes have that problem. So I really like, and then going back to even from when you started, like the questions that we need to be thinking about in order to, to make sure we're editing correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate it. Yeah, I agree. I thought there, I thought this was really great. Just kind of remembering the before and then this after, especially with that top visual, that's really impactful and really like clear about what you're trying to, to gain from this information. And I, I love that last tip on the, how to make, like I do the same thing when I'm using big numbers, I have them each on their own sheet, but to see them all on one, like that was, oh, that was nice. So I'm so oh, good. Yeah. Um, to ask the step by step because I got a little lost in the process, but I super helpful, especially for my like survey analysis. Yeah, then combine some sheets definitely helpful. Yeah, I'm very glad it's recorded because I report top level big numbers like that, and so to have it all on one sheet and not have to create individual sheets like that, oh, that was that's a time saver right there. Yeah, yeah that's a. Uh... 
it, it makes your it makes everything so much easier to manage to have it set up that way. Yeah, and it's a lot so cleaner good. like this too. Like I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's pretty. Yeah. yeah. Now with the lines kind of like connecting yeah. to. I'm so grateful, Lee, uh, for you just like taking your time out of Friday to help me out. It really feels like a gift. And, and also like Jessica and Kristen, um, thanks for putting this together, really. Yeah, this was great. And I, I, I appreciate your being a, a, uh, a good uh, volunteer. You know, it's not it's not easy for everybody to come up in front of a group of people they don't know and and go through something like this so i'm glad it helped uh, but yeah it's great uh certainly you know um jessica if you have a, and and kristen if you have a follow-up email or anything that goes out feel free to put my contact information in there so if people want to reach out they could ask me questions as follow-ups Happy to do my best to, to answer them uh, along the way. And I look forward to hearing some good stories from folks too. If you if you do make some changes that turn out well and are helping you from things that you, you learned today. I know we didn't have lots of time and there's so much ground to cover in this kind of a, of a thought process, but we, we started to make a, a bite out of this, which I, I feel is going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you both. This was great. I'm so glad we had this time together. I know that hopefully there was a lot picked up. I know Kristen and I kind of shared, but hopefully others picked up quite a bit to, you know, just continue to learn and grow in their Tableau use. Um, and I don't have to share screen again. Um, I know y'all want to continue on the conversation, but I just dropped in the chat like two upcoming events. So the Tableau conference is coming up in November. Um, you can find out more information in that link. And then we'll also have our next meetup in November. So I dropped that link there. Um, hopefully going to have someone come in and talk about maps. I know we've been talking about maps a lot. So there's a couple of people that I think would be able to come in and talk about maps for us. So. Awesome. But, yeah. And thank you so much, Lee. Yeah, this was just amazing. And we're so thankful for your time and for sharing your Tableau gifts with us. <laughs> All your tips. Happy and to share. Excellent. I'm help, happy to help make a difference. Yeah. All right. I'll follow up with you, Lee. Um, and if you want, we can find like maybe one more hour to kind of like you can say like your feedback, and then I mm -hmm. take way of improving it. And sure. Then we can record it and send it to everyone if, if they want to watch it. That would be awesome. Yeah, sounds good. Sweet. Okay. Thanks. All right. We can bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Have a good week. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Hold on.